watching this movie, you kind of get the vibe that like Mirabelle is an outsider sort of in her own family. What do you think Encanto says best about being sort of our true selves around those who are maybe supposed to know us best? Oh, that's such a good question because that is really the core of what this film is about, right? It's this family unit and everyone in your family has these sort of prescribed roles, right? You take them on because of maybe your birth order or maybe who you are to the family. Like, oh, that's the successful one. Oh, that's the crazy one, you know? And your family sort of sees you that way. And every time you get together with your family, that's the role that you take on. And I think sometimes that can be really restrictive, right? Like once we go out into the world, we can kind of be whoever we are. We don't have to be who our moms and dads and the rest of our family sees us as. That's part of the exploration of this film. It's like, who are you when you kind of break out of the role that's been given to you? Is, is that role a good fit for you even? Did you even get a say in it, you know? Um, I'm excited for families to see this film together, watch this film and then walk away and have those conversations with each other. I mean, it's great in some sense that it's coming around, coming out around the holidays, because Absolutely. I think for a lot of people, that's when like that really surfaces, like exactly you don't know right. me as an adult or whatever. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, for, for the longest time, every time I would get together with my family at Christmas time, I immediately felt transported back to my 15 year old self because mm -hmm. that's sort of how they still see me, even though I'm a grown person now, they still sort of see me that way. Don't stay out too late. Is that how many glasses of wine is that? You know, it's like, I'm a grown up. I'm a grown, I'm a grown up, you know? Speaking of being a grown up, you are a mom now. Mm -hmm. um, how did this movie make you think about like the family you want to create? I definitely think it made me feel much more connected to my Colombian history and my Colombian ancestry. My father's Colombian. He was born in Barranquilla. Um, I was lucky enough to go visit my family in Barranquilla before, prior to the pandemic. Um, and, and I was really, I'm really grateful for that trip because on that trip, I got to hang out with two of my father's sisters who have since passed away. And so for me, it's like, I know my kid is never going to meet those members of my family. And yet, because I got to spend that time with them, because I was around them, I get to tell her about them, you know? So much of connection to our own history, to our own ancestry is about storytelling. It's about passing down these stories to our kids and telling them like, this is where you come from and you can go anywhere, but this is where you come from, right? And I think this film is really special in so many ways, but one of the special things about it is that Disney chose to set its 60th animated film in Colombia and set it within a family. The story is all about a family from Colombia and how they function together. Like that's really special. And I'm I'm excited for her to be able to see the film someday. Although I'm sure she'll, you know, do the same thing that Dwayne Johnson's kids do, which is like, they don't believe it's him and Moana. I'm sure she's gonna do the same thing. But I mean, now you do have action figures of yourself. So at least like she can play with like, you know, Mirabelle. That's very special. I would have loved to have played with a doll that looked like me when I was a kid. <laughs> the world's not available. It's, it's really cool that the world has changed. Something I noticed when I was watching the movie is, you know, there's sort of the, um, the characters get assigned their sort of uh, magic when they come of age. And I was like, well, how old is this? And then when I was reading the press notes, it's when they're five. And I was thinking like, that's a very heavy burden to have put on you when you're five. Yeah. Um, to even like just have the sort of the whole life out in front of you or like to be Bruno and to sort of have visions all of a sudden when you're five years old. Yeah. Like, I mean, poor Mirabelle, right? It's gotta be hard. I mean, <laughs> it's gotta be hard. And yet like, it's so relatable because, you know, many of us have memories from being like a small child that have informed who we are to this day. You know, it's so relatable because in that moment, it's one of the first times that she feels like, oh no, I've not lived up to the expectation that others have for me. In particular, her abuela, you know, she loves mm -hmm. her abuela so much. And I think that is sort of the beginning of Mirabelle feeling like she's alienated from the rest of the family. And I think all of us have memories of being like really young and something shifting or something happening and and feeling forever changed by it. It does such a disservice to children to say like, oh, you'll forget about this. Or like, this doesn't matter. You're not gonna have a memory until you're 15 anyway. It's like, no, <laughs> kids are 
kids are amazing and they're really smart and they're really spongy and they take it all in and it's all like informing their little brains and like synapses are firing and new things are being connected and like all that stuff really matters. So it's a lot. It's a lot to put on a five-year-old. Um, so last question, you do a ton of singing in this movie. Um, if there was like, a, you know, an Encanto uh, live show and you had to sing one of the songs like start to finish, like what would be the hardest one to do? Welcome to the family, Madrigal. <laughs> that would be really hard. Although I did, I will say I was very proud of myself. I did sing it all the way through for a couple takes when we recorded it. Um, but it was because I'd practiced a lot. I have a really great vocal coach, Eric Vitro, who is a coach for a lot of amazing singers, Ariana Grande, um, Shawn Mendes. And like, he helped me so, I can't even express how much he helped me because like, I would not have been able to make it through that particular song without passing out. Plus I was like seven, eight months pregnant when we recorded it. So thank you, Eric Vitro, you're a, a godsend. Coffees for grown-ups.